Welcome to History Hunters. This school year, you will visit many historic sites and learn about the people, places, and events at each site. Your task is to try and learn as much as you can and then write about your findings after each visit. Before you begin your trips, we should go over some important information. First, what is a historian? A historian is someone who studies, writes, and talks about history. They are a detective, an expert, and a scholar. At History Hunters, you will be a historian. Historians should use the five W's and one H to uncover the mysteries of the past. Historians should ask, who did it? What happened? When did it happen? Where did it occur? Why did it happen? And how did it happen? Remember to think about all of these questions anytime you read about history or visit a historic site. Stop and think. Historians need resources to learn about the past. What type of resources do historians use? Where do they find them? Historians use primary and secondary sources to learn about the past. A primary source is authentic, original material. It's something that was produced or created during the time period being studied. Secondary sources are not original materials. They are things produced after the event. Ready for a pop quiz? Which of the following is a primary source? A. Deborah Logan's diary. B. A photograph of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. C. The Declaration of Independence. D. William Penn's map of Philadelphia. E. All of the above. The answer is E, all of the above. Primary sources can be letters, diaries, photographs, documents, maps, pottery, art, and anything else created during the time period you are studying. Which of the following is a secondary source? A, a painting of Washington crossing the Delaware painted in 1851. B, a journal article about Washington crossing the Delaware. C, the Liberty Bell. D, all of the above. E, just A and B. The answer is E, A and B. The painting and the journal article were created over 100 years after Washington crossed the Delaware. The Liberty Bell is a primary source. Now that you know what historians do and how they find information, let's talk about the history of Pennsylvania, starting with the Native Americans. 
Pennsylvania's first peoples were called Indians by the Europeans who came to America. These native peoples were made up of many different tribes or groups. Some of these tribes included the Lenape, the Susquehannocks, the Muncie, and the Iroquois. William Penn was born in England in 1644. During that time, the law said people had to be members of the official religion called the Church of England, but William Penn was a Quaker. Since Penn broke the law by being a Quaker, he went to jail. The king owed William's father money, but when his father died, the king then owed William this money. Instead of money, William Penn asked for land in America. So, William Penn founded Pennsylvania in 1682. He called the land his holy experiment. He wanted to try new ideas about government, and he hoped that people of different religions could live there together in peace. Who are the Quakers? Quakers are a religious group founded by George Fox in the 1650s. They call themselves the Society of Friends and believe that everyone has an inward light, which means everyone is equal. They usually dress and live simply. They are pacifists, meaning they believe in peace and not war. William Penn founded Pennsylvania on these beliefs. And so, Pennsylvania became a colony. But what is a colony? A colony is a place that is settled at a distance from the country that governs it. In this case, Pennsylvania was all the way across the Atlantic Ocean from England and the king who ruled the colony. Native Americans and Europeans were not the only people living in the colony during this time. Africans also arrived in Pennsylvania, but the first Africans did not come by their choice. By 1684, boats began to bring enslaved Africans to Philadelphia. What is slavery? Slavery refers to a condition in which individuals are forced to be owned by others who control where they live and what they do for work. An enslaved person is a human being who is treated like property and considered to be property and who is forced to work for nothing. We use the term enslaved African instead of the term slave to remember the uniqueness and humanity of the individuals who were forced into slavery. This image shows what is called the triangle trade. Ships from Britain sailed to West Africa with manufactured goods, such as clothes, weapons, and ironware, to be traded for men, women, and children who had been captured by slave traders and forced from their homes. Then the Europeans sailed the ships full of captured Africans to South and North America, where they would sell these African families and use the money to buy goods such as sugar, coffee, and tobacco. They would then take the goods back to Britain and sell them, and the cycle would continue.
After William Penn founded the colony of Pennsylvania, Philadelphia became its capital in 1682. Take a look at William Penn's map of Philadelphia. How was the city laid out? Next, William Penn had to create a government for Pennsylvania. He wanted to create a fair government. As we learn about his government, think to yourself, was Penn's government really fair? Penn decided citizens, not the king, should write the laws. In Pennsylvania, citizens had the right to vote. By voting, citizens could elect representatives or someone people choose to speak for them, and those representatives would write the laws. So what is a citizen? A citizen is a resident or voter living in a particular area. In order to be a citizen in the 1680s, you had to be a Christian, white, male, who owned land. Stop and think. Who was not allowed to be a citizen in 1680s Pennsylvania? Raise your hand if you think you know the answer. Women, Africans, Native Americans, and white men who did not own land were not citizens. Who can become a citizen in America today? Women, Africans, Native Americans, and white men who did not own land were not citizens and therefore could not vote. Why is voting so important? It's time to think, pair, share. What makes a good citizen? Think quietly for a minute about this question. Now turn to the person next to you and brainstorm together. What makes a good citizen? What does a good citizen do? Now raise your hand and share one of your ideas with the class. There are lots of different qualities of a good citizen. Here are a few. A good citizen will be kind, be responsible, treat everyone equally, protect everyone's rights, volunteer in the neighborhood, protect the environment, 
respect the property of others, and stand up for what is right. Your History Hunters field trips will take you to Germantown sites, so let's talk a little bit about the history of Germantown. One of the earliest European groups from Germany and Holland settled on what is now called Germantown Avenue way back in 1683. What language do you think they spoke? That's right, they spoke German. Germantown is still here more than 300 years later. Raise your hand if you have ever been to Germantown. Today, there are 16 historic sites in Germantown that are being preserved. These sites include houses, museums, burial grounds, a meeting house, and a school. What is historic preservation and why is it so important? Raise your hand if you think you know the answer. What can we learn from these places? Some of the sites include Maxwell Mansion, the Germantown White House, Concord School, and Hood Cemetery. You will visit five different sites throughout the school year. So what have we learned today? History is impossible to navigate without primary sources. At Stenton, you will have the opportunity to begin your work as a historian using primary source analysis skills to learn about the past. Have fun!